Hello everyone, welcome to video 6 of chapter 7. We continue our um, primal dual um, algorithm. So as step 3b, we have constructed the set C and R where we get stuck. And then now we're going to um, redefine a solution to the dual problem based on that information. Okay, so here's step four, here's the following. So a new solution for u, i, and vj. Now we put a prime on the top to say that's a different one to the dual problem is defined as follows. First, let's define the quantity d. d is defined to be the minimum of this quantity, that is cij minus ui plus vj. We know this quantity is non-negative. And then we will take the minimum of this for the index i in the set R and for j not in C. Okay, so it's a, it, yeah, so be careful. This is i in R and j is not in C. And now once you have defined the d, and that is the one you will use to adjust the solutions of the ui and vj, then I'll do the following. For the ui prime, I will do the following. If the i is in the set r, I will add d on top of ui. I will increase it. And if i is not in the r, u is unchanged. Okay, and for d, a kind of a complementary thing happens. So for j that is in c, I will subtract d from the vj to form the new one. And if j is not in c, and then v is unchanged. Okay? Then I have a new set of solution, uivj with the prime. And we'll take that as the new solution for the dual, and I will return to step two and carry that out. Okay, and let's take a look at what this step means for our in our example, then we'll have the following. So, um, since our set contains 2, so the minimum is taking over i equals 2. And then j not in c, c set contains only index 1. So not c means j can take value 2 and 3 of this expression. Okay, so taking i equal 2, j equal 2. I would compute that and take i equal to j equal to 3. I, I will compute this. And then to find the minimum of those two, this gives me 1, this gives me 3, so the minimum is 1. So d is 1 for this step. Okay, and then I will use that to update my u's. So u1 prime and is simply u1. This is unchanged. And u2 prime, 2 is in r, so I will add d on top. So it becomes 4 plus 1, which is 5. Okay, and let's calculate the v, vj value. So, and c equals number j, so uh, and the, in, is 1, contains 1 number, so when j is 1, I will subtract the d from v1. So I'll get 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So don't panic, this is totally okay. Remember, the u, i, v, j's are unrestricted. They can be negative, okay? All right, and then for v2 and v3, it's unchanged. Okay, so, so um, u2 is changed and v1 is changed. Okay, so let's plug this in and go back to step two. Okay, we turn to step two and we put in the new values and we... Um, so you see the, the red ones are the modified ones. These are different now. And then here is the same. And here's the same. Okay, now let's mark the links. So for here, I have 3 minus 1 is 2. is less than 3, so not linked. 3 plus 2 is 5, linked. 3 plus 4 is 7, linked. Put a circle. 5 minus 1 is 4, linked. 
5 plus 2 is 7, linked. 5 plus 4 is 9, less than 11, not linked. So we have these four links. Now we have a distribution problem where these circles indicate they're linked and the non-circle part means not linked. Okay, let's attempt to solve this distribution problem. And uh, let's look at it. So we see that first um, for destination one, this is the only link. In order to satisfy that, I need 20 units to ship there. And I have 50 units in O2, so let's ship 50, 20 units. So the demand is met here. Okay, so um, for destination two, it has two links. So let's wait a bit. Let's look at destination three. It's only linked from O1. And uh, O1 has only 30 units of goods. And then here I need 35. So I would ship everything the O1 has, 30 units here. And I will actually have um, a met demand of 5 units here. Okay, so we marked it. Okay, once that's done, let's look at what we can do for destination 2. So O1 is now empty. So I would ship zero, even though it's linked. And then um, from um, O2, um, how much can I ship? Well, it has um, 50 minus 20, 30 units there. But I only need 25 for destination 2. So I would ship 25. And now the demand is met here. Okay, so we see that this one has a surplus. And this one has a unmet demand. Now let's try to do the labeling process to mark it to see if I can adjust it. So starting from R2, let's look at the columns here. Which one I could uh, further increase to ship more out. And then I see um, column 1 and column 2. They are both okay. Okay, so once I mark the column 1 and 2, let's see, where could I further adjust? Can I reduce this one? No, I can't. Can I reduce this number? No, I can't. So I'm stuck at here. Okay, so now let's collect the, um, the set of index for the columns. So C would be column 1 and 2. And for the row, R is 2. Okay, now we need to compute UD. We need to iterate this one more time. Okay, so follow the definition. The D is computed minimum of this quantity over I in 2 and J not in 1 and 2, so J is 3. So actually there's just one number, 11 minus 9, which is 2. So D equals 2. Okay, and then we will adjust the UIVJ value. Now we put double prime, and then we go back to state step number two. So let's put the adjustment already in the table. So now they, and they are in red. So now V1 is negative 3, V2 is 0 because uh, I um, subtracted 2, and then this one I added further 2 units on that. Okay, and then we can mark the circles. Okay, so 3 minus 3, 0, less than 3, not linked. 3 plus 1, less than 5, not linked. 3 plus 4, 7, linked. 7 minus 3 is 4, linked. 7 plus 0, 7, linked. 7 plus 4 is 11, linked. Okay, so... Now we have a distribution problem where the, the linked parts are with the circle. Okay, now we can try to solve this problem. Hopefully, um, 
hoping to find a feasible solution if possible. Okay, so let's look at destination one here. It's only linked with the O1. And then I see that um, I need 20 units and I have 50 units in the, in the warehouse number two. So I ship 20 here. And then I have 30 remaining. So for D2 here, I need 25 and I have 30 so I can ship 25. And now let's move to D3. And uh, now um, 20, 25, 45 is shipped out. So I have only five units here. That's all I can ship, five units. And here I have 30 units. And that's all I can ship, 30 units. But then 30 plus 5 exactly equal to 35. So the demand here is now met. And then there will be no surplus either. Okay? So a feasible solution is found, which means and this following schedule is feasible. So x11 is 0, there's no link, right? 12 is 0, x13 is 30, x21 is 20, x22 is 25, and x23 is 5. So that schedule is feasible. Okay, so here comes the part B of step 3 in the algorithm because 3A is when there's no feasible solution. Now 3B, if now there, you find a feasible solution to this distribution problem, then any such solution is a minimal cost shipping schedule for the original transportation problem. So this statement is actually in theorem 7.2.2 and uh, we will only um, present the algorithm here we'll not do the proofs if you're interested there's a lot of details in the book you can go ahead and read that okay so applying that part of the algorithm then once we have found a, feas a feasible solution and then we can conclude that that is a minimum shipping cost um, schedule, and the minimum shipping cost is just the summing over all x i j times c j. Okay, so you could actually look at this table and compute it. These are zero, so you only add the non zero part. 7 times 30, 4 times 20, 7 times 25, 11 times 5, and you add them up. And the cost is four uh, five hundred and forty, and that's the minimum. Okay, so that's solving the problem two origin and three destinations. Okay, what do you think? Okay, so it's fair to say that. This is a very long process. You need to be patient. Okay, so um, that is all we are going to cover for um, this chapter. And I encourage you to read at least one more example from the textbook, 7.2.3, so to get yourself very comfortable with this algorithm. Okay, so that's all for this one. Thanks. Bye.